Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about arterial and venous line cannulation using ultrasound. Now I did a video on this a long time ago and I'm just not too happy with how everything turned out because I didn't have all my audio and video equipment that I do now, but I have my Butterfly IQ portable ultrasound system with my iPad Pro. I've got some medical gel that has some plastic cutouts for line placement. I've got some 20 gauge catheters. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this video. First thing is positioning. So it doesn't matter if you're doing an antecubital vein cannulation or a radial artery cannulation. Positioning is key. You have to make sure that that patient is positioned appropriately for whatever procedure you're doing. You want to have your supplies as well, and you want to have all this ahead of time. So for example, for a right radial arterial line cannulation, I want to have my 20 gauge long catheters. I want to have my ultrasound setup, sterile gel, sterile gloves, four by fours, guide wire, tegaderm, tape, all that good stuff and potentially an assistant to help me because we may need to capture images or get other supplies or whatever. So having all that stuff ready to go is key in addition to positioning. So for this video, I'm going to pretend that we're doing just a forearm IV cannulation. Most commonly, I will do radial arterial lines with ultrasound, but even difficult veins can be found in patients with dialysis and obesity and a lot of pitting edema and things like that. So the same methodology applies that I'm gonna show you all uh, with the ultrasound. But when I'm doing a forearm IV, I like to have the arm straight out, prepped, tourniquet on up here. If I'm doing a radial arterial line on the same side, I like to have the thumb outwards with some tape and then a little bump under the wrist to sort of create a little extension of the wrist, bring the radial artery a little bit more superficial. And with the radial artery in particular, I'm gonna digress here. You never ever wanna go right here by the carpal bones. You always wanna go a little bit more proximal. So you're not in that crease because that, at least anecdotally, I feel like that's what leads to a lot of kinking of these catheters. So you wanna be a little bit more proximal than that. But we're gonna go and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our ultrasound probe and try to adjust our knobology, meaning our gain, our depth, and all those basic settings. So my target of interest is gonna be this vein right there, but it's a lot shallower than the depth of field is. So I'm gonna decrease my ultrasound depth, and this is gonna optimize resolution. Also, I'm gonna drop the gain, overall gain, and ideally, blood will be black and the surrounding tissues will have varying levels of gray, depending on if it's muscle, nerves, edema, so on and so forth. So this is a pretty good shot. Next thing I wanna do is establish laterality. So which way is right on the screen, which way is left? And some people will actually pick up the probe and touch it like that. I just roll half the probe off the screen. So lift half the probe, lift the other half, and I know right is right, left is left. Okay. Next, I'm gonna take this 20 gauge catheter and you kind of want to see roughly how deep your structure of interest is. So in this case, I'm about a centimeter and a half down based on these markings here. And that's how far you want to start away from your ultrasound probe. Now remember on the bottom of the ultrasound, your beam emanates from a thin sheet in the middle. It's not from this end or this end, it's right down the middle. So when people say, oh, you're supposed to start a centimeter and a half away if the vessel is a centimeter and a half deep, just keep in mind that that's not gonna be a centimeter and a half away from the edge, that's gonna be from the middle. So more or less, it's gonna start right up against the, the edge of the probe. The last thing I wanna do before actually sticking is stabilize my wrist. So if I am working on a patient like this, I'm grabbing the ultrasound like so and using their body to stabilize my hand. This hand should not move at all during the procedure. You don't wanna have both your needle and ultrasound moving simultaneously, only one at a time. So now I've got a good target on the screen. I've got my wrist stabilized with the ultrasound. I've optimized my gain and my depth and everything. And I know which side is right and which side is left. Okay, so now you're gonna see me go ahead and visualize entering the skin. And as soon as I'm through skin, I'm gonna flatten out. And this part's very important because the ultrasound does better when the per beams are perpendicular to the structure of interest, in this case, the needle. So then I'm totally flat here. And in fact, I'll usually move my hand to the other side of the needle like that. And I'll go ahead and advance. And I'm looking right there, I popped into view. As soon as I come into view, I wanna pull back a little bit. And now I'm gonna play a little game where as I slide my needle, I wanna see the tip come into view like that. 
keep it right in the center of the lumen and slide my ultrasound up the arm. Now chase it with my needle, millimeter by millimeter, ultrasound up the arm. See this structure come back into view? Right there, slide the ultrasound up the arm. Advance the needle. You can see it come into view right there. And at some point, you're gonna get to the deep portion of your vessel and you can only flatten out so much. So at that point, it's prudent to go ahead and just try to thread the catheter off. And you can even try to do this in long axis if you're trying to be all fancy, but right there, you can see my needle on the screen right as I go ahead and try to thread this catheter off in this gel material, <laughs> which is not as easy, but you can start to see it move right there. So you all get the gist of it though. And I've hubbed it. So my catheter is well within the vessel. I can see it in long axis. I walked it in in short axis and I'm good to go. So this is where I'll go ahead and connect my IV tubing and be done with the procedure. So hopefully you all found that video really helpful. Again, one of the big pitfalls is people move too quickly. They move the ultrasound and the needle at the same time when one should be moved over the other. They don't stabilize their ultrasound with their non-dominant hand. And when you pop through the skin, you really wanna focus on flattening out. And if you can flatten out, one of the techniques people sometimes use is called looking back at your needle. So imagine if you're going in at a steep angle and you're on the skin like that, well, you won't be able to really see your needle tip that well. So one thing you can do is turn your probe like this and now you're perpendicular again. I prefer just to keep my probe flat on the patient's surface and go ahead and try to flatten out my needle as much as possible. As soon as you see your tip come into view, you know it's the tip. The shaft of the needle, whether you cut it in cross section here, 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 anywhere, is gonna look like a little dot. So keep in mind, the only way you know it's the tip is if you bring it into view and then it comes out of view. So by bringing it into view, then sliding your ultrasound up, bringing it into view, sliding your ultrasound up, bringing back into view, you're able to walk that catheter into your artery, your vein, whatever, and successfully cannulate and know that you're in the right spot without actually having to look at your flash chamber. This is how I work with my residents and fellows. Sometimes I have to actually cover up the, the needle itself so they're not tempted to look over and see if there's flash. But I think it's a better way to do cannulation and it's, it's relevant to whether you're doing arterial or venous cannulation. So hopefully these tips help. Subscribe for more content. Drop me a comment below with comments or questions and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.